I woke up in a terrible place I'd never seen before. I screamed in horror. A guy next to me put his hands on my shoulders and told me to calm down. I screamed even louder when I saw him. Then he gently put his hand on my mouth and said, Please, calm down. I'll explain everything. I'll take my hand away now, okay? I nodded. He pulled his hand back and, oh boy, I looked into his eyes. He was so cute. I demanded to know who he was, and he said, I'm your brother. I just told you half an hour ago. What is he talking about? I don't have any brothers or sisters. Do I look like a crazy person to you, moron? He explained that he'd been looking for me for years. He'd finally found me. He'd waited for me after school and had tried to talk to me and explain everything. But you passed out. I had to get you here. I didn't have a choice. I started screaming again. He pushed me into the corner and stood up. He said, sorry, sis, I have to do this. Forgive me. And just like that, he left. I looked around and for the first time, I noticed that I was in a bank vault filled with gold and safes. This was crazy. Then I looked back at him and I could see him clicking a digital locker. The wall opened and I saw a super fancy apartment behind it. Minutes later, he came back with some fancy looking food and asked me to eat. I'm not going to eat anything until I know what on earth is going on. Hmm, okay, you lose. He started eating, making all these annoying noises. Such a creep. After he was done, he offered me some water and I agreed to drink. I asked him about this place and why we were here. Oh, I live here. Who lives in a bank vault? Its owner. This was getting more confusing. I asked him how he could own a bank vault. When he only looked about 18, he said he was a self-made billionaire who created mobile games and had a huge company. I asked him why he was keeping me here and he suddenly looked really mad and got up to leave. You asked too many questions. I started crying and begging him to come back. I just want to talk to my parents, please. He froze, don't worry about them. And with that, he left. He came back minutes later with a blanket and a pillow. Don't bother crying for help because no one can hear you in here. I asked him about my phone. Oh, I think we forgot it at the restaurant. Here, take this. He threw the latest iPhone he was carrying. I was thrilled. I waited for him to leave and dial my dad's number. The phone didn't have a SIM card in it, and I couldn't download any message app because there was no signal or internet connection. Of course that would be the case. How dumb of me to think I could use the phone to get out of here. The phone was filled with all of his stupid games, and I played them all night till I fell asleep. After a few hours, I opened my eyes, and his face was very close to mine. He was looking at me creepily. It startled me and I pushed him away. <laughs> you do look a lot like her. Like who? Our mom. Listen, you creep. If you knew my parents, why didn't you just come to our house and introduce yourself like any sane person would? Instead of keeping me here like a psycho! He gave me a cold look and changed the subject. Here, I got you some food. This time, I was really hungry. And I ate all the food in one go, while he just kept looking at me like a creep. Again. Can you at least tell me your name, brother? He looked deep into my eyes. Justin's mother has two children, a girl and a boy. The girl's name is Abby. What's the boy's name? My name's Abby. Was he talking about my mother? The child's name would be Justin. That is correct. But Justin's mother loved Abby more. Justin's mother didn't love Justin. And he walked away. This time, I watched him carefully and memorized the digital code. I had to run away. He seemed dangerous. He got back a minute later, dragging a disc table with a big TV on it. He sat next to me holding a popcorn box. A video started playing. It was me, my seventh birthday party, my fourth grade math competition, my trip in the sixth grade, my first date, my first ballet show, my first driving lesson. I gasped. Had he been stalking me? I got angry. I started yelling at him and demanding answers. Who are you? And what do you want from me? Why don't you just eat some popcorn and chill? I threw the popcorn box away and started crying. He got up and started apologizing. Please, calm down, sis. I pushed him away. How am I supposed to calm down, you psycho? And don't call me sis. I can never be related to someone like you. He suddenly froze and looked really hurt. He whispered, I'm sorry, sis. I can't explain. And then he left, but he forgot about the TV. I tried to see if it was connected to Wi-Fi. And it was. I was about to open Gmail to send my parents a message when I noticed a file in the left corner of the desktop. It said, a letter from my parents. I immediately clicked on it. There were two files. A picture of my parents when they were younger holding a baby, and the second file was a letter. It was written yesterday. It said, Dear Justin, Son, we are so glad that you finally agreed to meet us. Your sister Abby will be thrilled. We haven't told her about you yet because... Suddenly, Justin opened the door and glared at me. He turned off the TV and dragged it inside. It's not the right time for you to know. I was shocked. Why hadn't my parents mentioned him before? A while later, I knocked on the door till he answered. What? I need to go to the bathroom. He gave me a cold look. Follow me. 
he walked towards the opposite wall behind me. He took a remote control from his pocket, clicked a ball, and suddenly, the wall opened up. A big fancy bathroom appeared. The walls, the toilet, the sink, everything was made of gold. I was about to turn around to shut the door when I bumped into Justin behind me. <clears throat> I need some time alone here? He was looking down at his phone. Fine, but I need your help with this since it's your favorite channel. You have any idea why they created My Story Animated? I looked at him for a moment and realized he was serious. So I said, I guess this dude, the channel's owner, has been in love with telling people stories since he was little. You know, like it's his passion. Justin looked impressed. You're smart. I asked why he was asking. It's nothing. It's just something related to my job. He got out, and I shut the door. He said while leaving, Call me when you're done. It doesn't open from the inside. I tried to find a window or anything to help me escape, but there was nothing. After I was done, I called Justin's name. He didn't respond. I called him again, and I heard nothing. I started to freak out, screaming his name. Justin! Just open the stupid door! After five minutes, he opened the door and started laughing like an idiot. <laughs> Being a brother is so much fun. I shoved him. Not cool! Then he started to leave. I knew I had to do something or ask something just to make him speak. So I blurted out, Why did my parents abandon you? He froze for a second and stuttered. Because, because they were too young and poor for the responsibility. They put me up for adoption. They made a mistake and I had to pay the price. And that is not fair. And with that, he started walking away again. I tried to run after him to stop him. I needed to tell him that it wasn't my fault. Suddenly, I stumbled and fell flat on my face. He immediately ran over to me and took me in his arms. He looked really worried. Are you okay, sis? I said I was fine, but he didn't seem convinced. He ran to his apartment and got a first aid kit, then started taking care of my leg, which hurt a bit. Then he got food and drinks and an iPad to keep me company. He was treating me like a little kid, and it was actually really sweet. He didn't want to leave until I swore 1,000 times that I was fine. Dude, I swear, it's nothing. Go, go now. He left, and honestly, I felt a little warm inside. I didn't know why. Maybe he wasn't completely crazy after all? After a couple of hours, I heard a loud noise and a bang on the door. Justin then opened the door and came running over to me. He looked scared. Abby, I need your help. But before I could respond, he fell to the floor. Oh my god, did he just pass out? I looked at his face. Darn. We did look alike. I seized the opportunity to escape and ran to the door. I entered the code and the door opened. To my utter surprise, I saw a girl standing in front of me. I screamed, please help me, the psycho kidnapped me. She didn't move at all. Don't call him a psycho, he's my husband. She pushed me back into the vault. I tried to fight, but she was really strong. Justin woke up, get away from Abby, now. Are you okay, my love? Did this girl hurt you? No girl messes with my husband. I'm not your husband, Judy. We broke up. You're only my assistant now. Okay, this is getting weirder. Now I have to deal with two psychos. Then Judy pushed me back, went straight over to Justin, grabbed his face and kissed him. You're mine, Justin! He pulled away and yelled at her. I don't want to deal with you right now. He turned to leave. She followed him out. Before closing the door, Judy said, Oh, your sister knows the code. Change it. Justin looked at Judy with a warm smile. He leaned in and gave her a kiss on the cheek. Thanks for letting me know. In seconds, the code was changed. See ya, sis. Then they both went inside. Okay, weirdos, I'm going to punch the two of you when I leave this stupid place. I looked around properly for the first time. The place was breathtaking. I started to wander around. I picked up one of the gold bars, and it was so heavy that I almost dropped it. I looked at it, and it had my name carved on it. That was strange. I looked at another bar, and it also had my name. And then another? And another? They all had my name on them. I felt so confused and alone. I sat on the ground, and before I knew it, I was fast asleep. After a while, I heard someone whispering my name. It was Justin. I opened my eyes and said out loud, Hey, why is my name? But he put his hand on my mouth, again. Be quiet, please. I see you saw all this. Your name is there for a reason. I can't explain. Now please leave this place and go to your corner. Don't stay here. Trust me on this one. Trust him? How could I? Then he held me by the arm. This time. I didn't push him away, and I wasn't sure why. He took me to my corner. Listen, Abby, about that girl, Judy. Then his phone started ringing. How was that possible? There was no signal. He looked at his phone nervously. His face turned pale, and then he looked at me. I have to take this right now. We need to leave this place as soon as possible. It isn't safe. And then he left. I heard him talking on the phone. Yes, she's still here. Minutes later, Judy burst in. She walked over to me and snatched my necklace from around my neck. 
I liked it the moment I saw it, and I think it looks better on me. Hey, that's mine. Give it back. Come on. You have an entire bank vault filled with gold, and you want my cheap necklace? It's from my mom. Give it back now. Yeah, I know it's from your mom. That's why I took it. Judy takes anything she wants. She stuck her tongue out at me and left. After a couple of hours, Justin came back and he was sweating a lot. He was wearing a formal suit now. Judy followed him, wearing an ugly wedding dress with my necklace. Her smile was creepy. She told me to get up, handed me a Bible, and said, Marry us. I was shocked and froze. I stared at both of them. Then Justin gave me a worried look, and he nodded. He looked terrified, and I knew I didn't have any choice but to agree. I held the book in my hands, and Justin and Judy stood in front of me. When it was time for the wedding vows, Judy said, Justin, my only lover. I know we've only known each other for six months, but I believe we're meant to be together. I knew it the moment you agreed to bring one of your family members to meet me. I wish it was your parents and not your stupid sister, but it's okay. I forgive you. I was stunned. Who was the psycho? And what did she do to my brother? Did she blackmail him into bringing me here? She was smiling from ear to ear. Come on, babe. It's your turn. Don't be shy. Justin gulped. Judy, m my lovely partner, I loved you more than... Loved me? Justin tried to calm her down and begged her to let him finish. I love you more than this bank vault and all of its contents. And he looked at me out of the corner of his eye. Was he trying to tell me something? The bank vault and its contents? Ugh, you're so bad at this. Just shut up and put that ring on my finger. Just marry me. Marry me. I said I had to ask the question first. Do you take... He does. I do. We do. You're annoying me now. Just shut up. Then she snatched the ring and put it on, and quickly put his ring on his finger. She then pulled his face to hers and kissed him. Oh, by the way, I have good news for you, babe. I'm pregnant! Justin's jaw dropped, and so did mine. Um, that's awesome, babe. If it's a girl, I'm going to name her Abby, although I don't like your sister. But I love how much you love her. I mean, you carved her name on all the gold bars. How sweet! I want my daughter to feel that she has a family and she belongs to someone. Okay, we're done here, babe. We need to leave. Let's go. And they both stormed out. This was insane. But I remembered what Justin had said, and I ran to the vault. I opened one of the drawers, and it wasn't locked. That was strange. But what was inside was even stranger. White papers. I opened another drawer, and it had the same. I opened another, then another one, and then one more. They all only had white blank papers in them. What was this place? I opened the drawers on the opposite side and they had the same white papers. I sat on the floor feeling helpless and started crying. Then I saw it. It was a piece of paper on the floor. It had a number and a big font in the middle. One, 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 one. I tried to understand what it meant. Then the big safe caught my attention. It had a digital locker next to it. I ran to it and entered the code, one, 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 and the safe opened. And there I was, standing in front of the highway. I ran out terrified. Help! Someone, help me, please! A woman stopped her car and opened the door. I asked for her phone and called my parents. Come here now and call the police. My brother was kidnapped. His psycho girlfriend kidnapped him. My brother is in danger! An hour later, the police arrived, and I explained everything. Within an hour, they'd found Justin and Judy. I ran to Justin and hugged him tight, and we both cried. I'm sorry about all of this, Abby. I'm sorry for the way I treated you when we first met. I was mad at you because I thought it wasn't fair that you got to live with my parents and I didn't. I was mad at everyone. My parents joined us and started apologizing. Justin assured them that he forgave them and said that he hadn't wanted to meet them this way. I love Judy so much. It was such a toxic relationship. So I'm not going to get any of those gold bars with my name on them? <laughs> yes, you will. 